Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I hope you're all doing well. Today we have got some leaked benchmarks in synthetic benchmarks as well as a couple of gaming benchmarks for the RTX 3080. Sadly, we don't have any 3090 numbers yet, but we have got some early leaked benchmarks uh, in Fire Strike, so those are th synthetic benchmarks, and then also a couple of gaming ones as well, uh, as I said at the start. Uh, I noticed that, you know, a lot of the YouTubers and stuff like that have already been starting to do their unboxings for the 3080, which sadly means that I did not get an RTX 3080, and I probably won't get a 3090 or a 3070 directly from NVIDIA, which is rather unfortunate, so won't have any launch day coverage on that stuff, it seems, at least at this point in time. Uh, and according to this article, the reviews are meant to be coming out on Monday for the 3080, so only just after this weekend, uh, I guess that's when we should be seeing the, the benchmarks coming out. Uh, I have had some words in with add-in board partners, and things are looking very promising there, uh, but I don't think anyone's going to have add-in board card testing uh, coming out like early next week along like alongside the Founders Edition. It seemed those are going to be coming in the weeks after. Uh, so it uh, looks like I am at least on the front lines of getting one of those cards as soon as they become available. So fingers crossed, very hopeful for that. Uh, otherwise, I might have to go out and buy a Founders Edition card. So if you want to help with that, grab yourself uh, maybe an RTX spatula t-shirt, um, which is available in the Spreadshirt shop, which is linked down in the description below, or maybe think about using uh, one of the sponsors here on the channel, which helps keep the lights on and keep buying hardware for us to review here on Joker Productions. So without further ado, here's a sponsor spot. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen. And all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the 3080 numbers, shall we? These are over on videocards.com, who was able to actually cross-reference between a few different reviewers in terms of the gaming benchmarks to validate some of those numbers uh, and, you know, based on similar test systems using a 10900K and all of that. So trying to keep everything as even as possible to validate uh, some of the testing. So that would uh, stand to reason as to why the um, there's only two gaming benchmarks here uh, in this. But we'll start off with the synthetics because those can actually be uh, very telling just for, you know, for raw GPU power and what these cards could actually be expected to do, although, of course, when it comes to games, you know, some games run different, different driver support and all of that. But with synthetics, we kind of just get a decent idea of the raw GPU performance. So it looks like we have the 3080 here, and it also lists along the testing on the 2080 Ti, 2080, 2070, and 2060 Super, respectively. So we'll get a good idea of what this new $700 GPU from NVIDIA can do up against these cards. I'm honestly most interested in the 2080 Ti as a personal owner of one, uh, but also the 2080 Super, although I, I, I guess I guess this is technically replacing the 2080 or the 2080 Super um, in terms of its price, but you know, with it actually seeming to be a fair bit faster than the 2080 Ti, I'm really interested uh, in those numbers considering it's almost half the price of what a 2080 Ti was just a week ago, uh, or still now, I guess. Um, so we can see here the 3080 on 3D Mark Fire Strike, 1080p, 1440, and 4K was tested. At 4K, we see the biggest gain uh, in performance here at 10,862 versus the 2080 Ti at 8,010, and the 2080 Super at 6,600. And 69. And you know, all these numbers are here. I'll have links to the sources down below. I'm not going to go and read every single number in this. Uh, but really, what we want to focus on here are the percentage gains. Now, as I said, in 4K, we saw the largest performance gain over the 2080 Ti as well as the 2080 Super. So the 3080, obviously, being at 100% performance, it was 26% faster than the 2080 Ti. So that's pretty good considering this is again $700 versus what was last gen a $1,200 graphics card and then versus the 2080 Super we're looking at almost 40% faster than the 2080 Super so it would definitely against the regular 2080 we're definitely looking at a little bit over 40% performance uplift which for one generation 
is pretty damn good. And that's at 4K. At 1440, these numbers do get a little bit closer, and that's uh, kind of telling as to why NVIDIA during their big reveal and everything, where we also got the reveal of the RTX spatula, uh, was so keen to focus on 4K performance. If you go back during that reveal by Jensen and look at all of the graphs that they showed off, everything was based on 4K gaming performance because they knew that is where they would see the biggest performance gains with the um, higher memory bandwidth on GDDR6X. So, of course, NVIDIA wanted to showcase the, uh, you know, the biggest performance gains possible, and those are going to be at 4K. I mean, even at, like at 1080p, the 3080 is only 20% faster than the 2080 Ti versus 26% faster uh, at 4K, which is, you know, fairly close, but at 4K, you're definitely going to see those bigger gains, and for me, I'm absolutely, um, you know, fine with that, and when it comes to uh, actual gaming benchmarks on here, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as well as Far Cry New Dawn, and again, 4K does seem to be, you know, the, the biggest gains here that we're seeing. So in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, we got 84 FPS on the 3080 versus the 2080 Ti, getting 63 average FPS, and then 51 on the 2080 Super. That accounts for a 25% performance uplift versus the 2080 Ti, which is really nice to see, and then 39% faster than the 2080 Super. And when using RTX and DLSS, that does get closer here as the 3080 was only 18% faster, than the 2080 Ti, and then 30% faster than the 2080 Super. So yeah, the RTX stuff is definitely going to be a bit more taxing, and we're not seeing as much of a performance uplift when that stuff is enabled, which is something we're definitely going to have to do a lot more testing on to sort of determine, you know, how much better these new cards are than Touring was, you know, with RTX stuff enabled. You know, the one this is only just one game here. We're definitely going to need to go ahead uh, and test on more titles. And if I remember correctly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was using Ray Traced Shadows and then DLSS, which I'm not sure is DLSS 2.0, but I could be wrong on that, but I don't think that it is. Um, at 1440p, we uh, only managed to see a gain of, what was it, 23 FPS here when not using um, RTX and DLSS, and then it was 18% with RTX and DLSS enabled on 1440p on the 3080 versus the 2080 Ti. And looking at Far Cry New Dawn, again, you know, talking about things with the memory bandwidth, seeing the biggest gains at 4K, this is a title here where this is extremely evident. As we can see, the 3080, which has less video memory than the 2080 Ti, but better memory bandwidth because of GDDR6X, uh, we could see it running 19% faster at 4K than the 2080 Ti, knocking that down to 1440p, only 6% faster in 1080p, that gets even closer, being just 2% faster than a 2080 Ti, and only 3% faster than the 2080 Super, 8% faster than a 2070 Super in Far Cry New Dawn. So at the lower resolutions, it seems like these new cards are not going to give as much of a performance uplift, although it's going to definitely vary on title. Um, these, I feel like these are almost like two completely different ends of the spectrum. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're getting very respectable performance uplifts here, 25 to 30% roughly. That is pretty decent over the 2080 Ti and then over the 2080 Super, which really the 3080 should be compared against more. Uh, we're seeing about a 40%, 30 to 40% uplift, which is really good. But then we have something like Far Cry New Dawn, where, you know, 4K is really the only area we're seeing a, you know, pretty respectable performance uplift there of 19% over the 2080 Ti. And then all the way down to 1080p, the performance uplift is virtually non-existent, even going all the way down to 2080 Super, uh, 2080 Super or 2070 Super, very close to this new 3080 graphics card. So I feel like those are two different ends of the spectrum there, which is why we need to see way more games uh, tested than just what we are seeing here, because I'm sure there's going to be several titles that fall maybe right in the middle. Maybe we'll see much bigger performance uplifts at 1080p, but I don't think, I think those titles are going to be few and far between, as, as I think we'll be more likely to see a CPU bottleneck, even at 1080p, on the R RTX 3080, as it's faster than a 2080 Ti, apparently, and the 2080 Ti, in a lot of titles, unless it's really, like, pushing anti-aliasing or RTX features, um, complete overkill for when it comes to 1080p, and it gets bottlenecked very often by the CPU, and uh, the GPU is not even getting fully utilized in a lot of cases when I've tested the 2080 Ti at 1080p. So that's probably what we are seeing here as well, which is why... 
um, the performance is so close is that the games are more than likely being CPU bottlenecked. And as you move that resolution up to 1440, 1440 ultra wide 4k and then maybe even like 32 by 9 super ultra wide you know you're going to see those bigger performance uplifts there where the cpu is not getting in the way of the gpu as much so those are all of the numbers that we have got here today that i can uh, go ahead and and share with you guys again these are leaked benchmarks uh, as far as i know embargoes are until monday although i haven't had confirmation on that that's just that's the rumor on the street is that review embargoes for the 3080 are on Monday. Again, I have not been sampled. I have not agreed to any embargoes or anything like that. So if I see any other leaked numbers or any stuff like that, I will be sure to share it along your guys' way uh, ahead of the launch. So stay tuned for that content if you want to check it out as soon as it goes up. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button, ring the bell, all of that good stuff. Maybe buy yourself a shirt and I will see you tomorrow for another video.